On our Ford scoreboard, it's two to one Toronto in the top of the seventh inning. And joining us is uh, Jack Curry. J Jack was on earlier, and uh, Jack, uh, I just want to get your thoughts on what the, about Garrett Cole and what he had to say. Right, I listened to you guys give your evaluation. Aaron Boone talked about him outside the clubhouse. Cole talked about his own performance and said some of the things that you guys had already discussed. He, he really liked the way all of his pitches were performing today. A lot of swings and misses. You talked about the four-seamer. You talked about the two-seamer. But I also asked about his changeup. I said, was it your intention to work that changeup in more today? And he said, absolutely, that he and Kyle Agashioka had that discussion before the game. They didn't see a lot of opportunities in the last start, which obviously didn't go the way he wanted to, allowing four home runs to, to use that changeup. So we saw him flash that a couple of times today. You know, you mentioned the, the four home runs. From what I understand, twice he gave up home runs on back-to-back -back pitches. Ground ball is short for Gleyber Torres, and Campbell is thrown out, out number one here in the seventh inning. I asked Aaron Boone about that before the game, and he actually said to me, it was two home runs. It was only two. So two of them, I think, he felt had a little bit of help with the, uh, oh, with the, with wind. the wind. But yeah. it went down as four. And even in the spring training game, if you're if you're Garrett Cole, that's not something you you want to see happen. He was definitely pleased, guys, today with the fact that he got up to 55 pitches, was able to get up and get down. It was interesting. Watch, do a little plug here. We've got a show coming out with uh, Garrett Cole, David Cohn, and myself. It's going to be on on uh, the 22nd. But off camera, listening to the two of them talk, Coney said to him, it doesn't, the pitch count doesn't matter, right, Garrett? It's how many times you have to get up and down. So they were talking about, yeah, the pitch count's important, but getting up and getting down after each inning is, is something that's vital. Now, the 22nd, we have a game, and I'm doing it. So it's probably going to come on after the game as this ball is hit in the air to right center field. It's going to be Zach Zaner, the right fielder, who makes the catch for out number two. So I hope they replay that. So I can see it when I get back uh, back north. I, I hope they do too, Kenny, and uh -huh. I think they'll I think they'll replay it a lot. So in other words, you're like Moonlight, and you got star shows and stuff out there now. Right? I spoke to Garrett Cole at the beginning of spring training. I, I love his pitching mind. Right. And I know he's a fan of David Cohn's. And I said to him, "Would you sit down with me and Cohn and, and just talk pitching?" And he was very into it. So we taped it last week and. It was great to just watch the two of them or listen to the two of them. It's a nice long inning you had, Jack. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay with us, Jack. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. A one-two. Was that a fair ball? Now, wait a minute. Reggie Pruitt is coming back to the home plate area. Now, originally, the home plate umpire, D.J. Rayburn, said it was a fair ball. But I think the ball might have hit him in yeah, the foot. Hit him in the box. Yeah, okay. All right, Jack. Jack, keep going. <laughs> full fire. Use some more bullets. Yeah, it looks like it did hit him. Meanwhile, Montgomery's been pitching very well at pitches upstairs for a ball. Now, Giancarlo Stanton. Stan uh, also came out in the in this new world that we have spoke outside the clubhouse and mm -hmm. said that he thinks he's going to get out on a field and run tomorrow. So that that's a positive sign right there. He's already been hitting indoors uh -huh. trying to bounce back from that calf injury. He would not give a timetable. He said he, he's not going to say when he thinks he might get back in a game. But it was positive news from a Yankee perspective to hear that there's a good chance that he's going to be on a field running tomorrow. So I, I read he's been doing some tea and toss and now starting to take BP. Yes, inside a cage. He was, in fact, working out today. Uh, his, his interview kept getting pushed back because Jason Zillow, the media relations director, every time he was checking on Stanton, he, he was in there working out. He was in there trying to get himself ready. So uh -huh. as the Yankees move closer to opening day, they'd like to be as, as whole as they possibly can be. So guys like Stanton, Sanchez, Judge, waiting to see what the what the future holds for them. Now, do any of the players have thoughts on this new situation that we have with interviews and uh, how they're going to be conducted? They, they do, Kenny. Garrett Cole addressed it and said that. I'll tell you what he said next inning. Was Jack Curry remaining with us? And where, where were we, Jack? Just pick it up right where we Garrett Cole's yeah. reaction to the new MLB directive about the clubhouse being closed to non-essential personnel. Cole very eloquently stated listen with what is going on in the world today and and teams trying to be and leagues trying to be as careful as possible he wasn't surprised to hear that this had come about 
He said personally he's been washing his hands as often as he can, trying not to touch his face, and knows that because of this situation, uh, players are going to have to be more accommodating in terms of coming out of the clubhouse to do interviews for, for the media side of things. Uh, John Carlos Stanton said the same thing. He said it's on us to be able to deliver our message to the fans, and so we'll have to make sure that we, we come out of the clubhouse and do these interviews. Well, it sounds like the players are going to be accommodating it. If you have players, especially the star players on teams that are willing to do it, that means the other guys are going to follow. Right. It's a different world for everyone, and everyone's getting acclimated to it. Interesting question, Kenny, was asked to Zach Britton because he was obviously a member of the Baltimore Orioles when they once played a game at Camden Yards yeah. to an empty stadium because of uh, the riots that had occurred in Baltimore. And he was asked what that was like and if he thought something like that could occur in the future. He said he wasn't sure about the possibility that it could occur in the future, but he did say that it was very eerie and, and strange to play, <laughs> play in a ballpark of that size and for it to be empty. Well, you know, we hope it doesn't get to that point as this pitch is fouled off by Luke Voigt leading off for the Yankees. Here in the seventh, the Yankees are down 2-1. to one. And we hope this, uh, this situation with the coronavirus just ends as quickly as possible and people remain healthy throughout the country and throughout the world for that matter. Because this is something that uh, we haven't had to deal with uh, very often. Swing and a miss. And Luke Voigt is struck out by Yamaguchi. You know, a lot of people have had to adjust plans. You know, travel plans, wedding plans, all that sort of thing. And that's certainly not fun. So one out. That'll bring up uh, Miguel Andujar, who's had a single in two at-bats. Jack, what do you think about Andujar? Well, he's at third base today. And it looks like, nope, this is going to be caught by the second baseman, Kevin Smith. So two down. He's looked pretty good in left field. He has. Uh, watching him early in spring training, I thought that he tracked the ball well. I thought he looked comfortable out there. I I think you can watch a guy's athleticism and then see how it translates and I, I think it absolutely translates for him. I was listening to you and Paul earlier and you hit on the number that I would have said. I, I've asked friends that same question. How many at bats do you think and Duhar will get this year and I, I think 400 is the magic number. Yeah. I think you have to find a way if you're the Yankees to get his bat in the lineup and whether it's third base a little left field a little first base a little some DH. That, that's a dynamic bat right there. You you want him in the lineup. You know, I, I, I give him credit, too, because he's been a third baseman his whole life. And now he's willing to make the sacrifice to go try other positions or try and get as best as he can at other positions so he can just play. You know, Kenny, I don't know if you ever went through this, but there was a time, uh, and even when I came over here, that, uh, you know, I went from right field to left field, or in uh -huh. Cincinnati, I got stuck in center field. And there are times that, you know, you get so worried about your defense because you're not comfortable that you almost forget about the offense part of the game, and that is his strength. And, and you know, by playing three, four positions, uh, you know, you hope that he doesn't get past, you know, what he does best, and that's swing the bat. Well, if he makes himself more versatile, that will give him more chances to get in the lineup. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and the fact is that Aaron Boone, very good at uh, maneuvering his roster. And uh, as you said, somebody's going to hit over 290 and drive in 90-something runs and hit 20 home. you got to play. And to your point earlier and to Paul's point, Aaron Boone mentioned that and Duhar was already doing this before the Yankees yeah. brought it up with him. He was already saying to himself, I've got to learn how to catch a fly ball. All right. I mean, he knows how to catch a fly ball. I, I, I have to be better at being an outfielder. I have to get myself more acclimated to these other positions. So that shows an incentive and an initiative there to, to want to get better. This ball's hit well to center field. Going back is Alfred to the wall. This one is gone. A home run for Kylie Gashioka. And it's a 2-2 ball game. I think last year he really caught the attention by the power he shoot, showed in AAA. And this is one of the days where the wind's really not helping the baseball. This dead center field, this ball was, was hit well. That's his third home run of the spring. His other two came in the same game in Lakeland against the Tigers. 
Well, he hit 20 home runs at AAA last year, three with the Yankees, and now this is his third in spring training. Always like to watch the reaction of the pitchers. Yeah, head down, that usually means uh-oh. <laughs> and again, this ball went into the wind and still made it a deeper, one of the deepest parts of the ballpark. Zach Zayner to the plate, and he'll take a pitch for a call strike. Well, how would you like to be Higashioka? 29 years old, and this is probably the first spring where he sort of knows what his career path is. That that, that job is there for him, the backup catcher job. Yeah, it's amazing that, I mean, he's not, he's been a backup catcher, does a great job receiving, but one of the longer tenured guys with the Yankees. I think he was drafted in 2008. Cole had a funny line. I forgot to mention this. Uh, obviously, with Sanchez having the fever and the back issue, Agashioka mm -hmm. caught him today, and Cole said, I think that's the first time Kyle caught me since we were about 13 because they were <laughs> they were obviously oh. boyhood teammates in California, played on a team together. So they, they reunited today out there, and now Agashioka has helped Cole and the Yankees out by going deep. So reunited, it feels so good, right? <laughs> it's a little peach, yeah. peaches and herbs yeah. there. Yeah. Nice job, Kenny. Yeah, you know what? You know when you listen to those oldie stations and you know all the words of every song, you know you're getting older. <laughs> Ground ball is short. It's been all with the throw. Nice scoop at first base by Christian Williams.